Hello, it's Paul here. I am going to give you as quick as I can an introduction to Zendesk today. Uh, everything you need to do for, to use Zendesk as your ticketing system, maybe as your knowledge base, maybe as your live chat, quick and easy. Uh, and I'll try to show you everything I know about Zendesk. I use Zendesk every day. I use it as my ticketing system and I think it's great. What I'll do is, please understand, this is an introduction to Zendesk. It's not an exact how to use Zendesk. What I'll do is I'll break it out into lessons that I'll timestamp in the video in the description and I'll put that in a free training course on my site. That's a place where you can say exactly how do I do this and I'll post videos uh, to do specific things. But this is an introduction and I will show you what the great features are with Zendesk. What's great for me it is July 2020. If you pause me now and tell me why you're here, Tell me what you're looking to learn. Tell me what you're hoping to get out of this video. If I don't cover it in the video, I will reply to you in the comments and I'll try and point you in the right directions. Uh, and if you enjoy the video, a subscribe would be amazing. Let's get into it. Right, what I start with usually is pricing. And Zendesk, if you're watching, your pricing is confusing. Uh, I pay a pound a month for what I'm about to show you, but I'm on legacy pricing because I've been a Zendesk customer for... I think five or six years, maybe even longer now, which is scary. But I'm going to show you is um, what I use it for, and da -da, there isn't a there isn't obvious places to click for pricing. Which obviously you've got to email. I think it's about five pound per month per user for the ticketing system. Um, I'm going to show you the guide, which is here. So the guide that you're going to see for me, uh, support request for Google Analytics search knowledge base, is uh, flag crate car, uh, crate with another. I think I'm on either the free version or the 15. So, it, so the guide goes up in prices. The only one that I think would be well worth buying is the is the one where you can make your your own custom domain. So you would have support.yourdomain.com uh, or whatever it is. So sorry, uh, I'm going to show you. Uh, chat which I'm going to show you the free chat as well. Uh, I don't use talk explore or gather They're not uh, something so I'm going to show you these three things uh, Ticketing system the guide and the chat pricing. I'm sorry. It's it's just um, It's just a little bit too hard to understand Zendesk you need to you need to really sort your pricing page out Right, let me let me take you a walk around my Zendesk. So when I log in uh, this is what I first see. The first thing I see is my open tickets, things I've got to reply to, or things that I've obviously got to complete. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll click on a new one and create a new ticket in a minute. I don't want to click on these. These are all active people, so I don't want to share any information or what they've said. Any recent history is going to come down here. It's very basic. You're going to see uh, any statuses that you've got, any group tickets that you've got. I don't use a lot of stuff like that. Here's your tray. Anything that you, anything in there that you uh, have got coming in, any suspended tickets, so you might have marked things as spam. We get a lot of spam emails every now and again. It's pretty good at marking them spam, but you might want to check in because if it automatically marks it as spam, you might miss a few. Uh, in the corners, you're reporting, so how many hours it's taken you to reply, uh, solve tickets, how many you've done in the last 30 days. Uh, agent touches, I don't know what that means. I don't use a lot of this, but if you're obviously in a business where you want to see how your department's doing, then uh, you can see exactly their st statistics uh, uh, and all that sort of deep dive information that you need, right? You need to prove that certain people are doing their job in a certain way. All settings, you can obviously set up Zendesk to do many different things. Um, Marketplace is loads of different apps. There's loads of different integrations. Uh, depending on on other platforms that you're using, there may be integrations with it that you can uh, add to enhance it to you know cloud app up here. You can add um, pictures and things to your to your replies, or you can add screenshots and click it with cloud app. Um, manage your people. Obviously, I haven't got any. It's just managing me. I would have thought. Uh, people in the past. Oh, so this is actually. Oh, and I shouldn't. These are all your, your customers. I don't ever click on that, but the customers actually CRM part of it. Organization fields that you can add and change anything you want to edit. 
different views, different sections you want to look at. Uh, within there is all editable macros. If you want to run funky macros uh, and do things, you can. Again, back to reports, tinkering with reports and what you want to see. Customer tags uh, and populating tags like that. Ticket fields, so when people sign up for your ticket or go to your contact page, then um, you can uh, edit the fields. Ticket forms, same thing. Email channels, this will be important. I'll come back to this. Uh, when you first sign up with Zendesk, they will give you a Zendesk email. So people, you can, you can job see people and say, uh, send me an email, support at paulnicholson.zendesk.com, which is obviously hard. But you can set up your own email <clears throat> by forwarding it. So if somebody emails support at paulnicholson.com, it creates a ticket and sends it to me. I'm going to show you more in that in a minute. Twitter, you can access your Twitter and link it to the Twitter. So if you get any messages on Twitter or Facebook, uh, wall posts or anything like that, you can react to them. So if you're a, if you're a company that's keeping an eye on people mentioning you and you wanting your support agents to react to stuff like that, you can do it on Twitter. You can connect the Facebook Messenger to your page and um, allow people to talk directly in Facebook. Talk settings is for the phone that I don't use. Text is the same. If you're using Talk, uh, Talk Teams, you can use Talk. I don't use it. I'm not going to show you that in this. The widget I do use being able to set up a widget on your website. So if I go to paulnicholson.com, you are going to see a little help widget here. This is it, so people can contact me, and that's on every page I use. So this is where you set it up, really easy to do. API and um, development kit sort of stuff. The, a lot of people are not going to use this sort of thing. Channel integrations, a lot of, a lot of settings to go through. That you can imagine you can tinker with but you're going to live your life on your open tickets you're going to live your life also here in the guide a place where you can put all your frequently asked questions knowledge base i've put some full training courses the, the guide's very good on google actually for google search you will get a lot of people finding you through searching on google the seo settings of the guide's pretty good right and i'll i'll show you uh, a little bit of introduction to the guide as well. What doesn't show when you go to um, this or uh, when you're logged in, or I'm going to left that open because I'm going to test that in a minute, is at the top of the guide it will say submit a request, and that is your ticket form. So this is if you want to send anybody to, to uh, contact you, you give them that URL. Zendesk don't give you a form page where you can just embed a form. Well, they never did. I don't know if they started doing it, but I haven't seen. And they don't give you an app for uh, that you could you could just have an app on your computer to manage it. Two things that I think Zendesk should do, but they've never used, they've never done it, which is a form on your website and a and a and an app. But so you get a little help button, and that is the guide. If I go back and we go to oh now um, live chat. So if I go to chat, you will see on the help button, and I don't go live chat very often because it just slows me down. Like, you know, it's a uh, it's a dedicated thing if you're trying to work, isn't it? So you see the help button, just says help. The minute you go online on chat, it will say chat in a second. Come on. Do I have to refresh for it to chat? Ooh. Online, let me see if it's changed on my website. No, okay, I might have changed my settings. I might have changed my settings. Oh no, when they go to my website. To, um, to say help still rather than chat. Or have I? I don't think I have. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, so... When they jump in, when your chat's live, they can start talking to you with that button. I'm not sure why it's working. I had a problem with my upgrade or my renewal. I upgraded and it, it messed it out and they, they pried about with it. But I probably have to change that setting, but it should say chat, right? It, it would check, instead of saying help, it would say chat. Or whatever you set. So you can see visitors on your site. Uh, new activities, simulate visitors. Need help. Chat with us. Here we go. 
So you would have a chat box. I'm not sure that's different. Yeah. Um, you can see the history of chats. You can see analytics of chat again. You can monitor if you upgrade. I'm on the free version. This doesn't work on the free version. Uh, same with visitors. You can only see so many. Any settings that you want to change for your agents, you can do automatic replies and quick replies. So if you've got a, uh, if you've got something where you always got to quickly reply, like turn it off, turn it on again, you can do a quick hashtag something, and that'll dump that whole answer in there. And you'll be able to link it to your knowledge base as well. I don't do chat a lot either, but uh, um, I want to show you more about the support side, really. Right, let me show you the, the process of somebody putting a ticket through to you from uh, a website form or emailing you. It's the same thing. So if somebody came to my website, they could put in here uh, their name. I'm just going to put in... Uh, Paul Nico, I'm going to use this test email I've got at gmail.com. Uh, hello, I need some help with Zendesk. Ah, can you help? Something like that. A lot of people message me and they don't actually ask me questions. Send. The email will come through to me. Down the bottom, I will get there's the email, and if I go here and refresh, at some point the customer will get a confirmation email come through if I put the right email address in. I put the wrong email address in, didn't I? Oh my God. Right, let's try again. Hopefully, no, I don't think anybody's gonna have that email. Uh, Paul, Nico, um, Blue Jeans, Paul. My old business name, Bubgees Media, uh, gmail.com. I need some help with <laughs> Zendesk. Can you help? All right, send it. Hopefully, this is going to go 655, and this is going to go to 2. There we go, 655 at the top, and 2. So, customer first. Customer gets this email. Uh, your request has been received and is being reviewed. I will answer it as soon as I can. I actually tinkered with the uh, template and uh, wanted people to sign up for my Zoho training partner stuff. So I edited this. I, I added the ticket number just so people could see, you know, nearly 2,000 tickets I've replied to. Uh, so they get this, right? Um, uh, please retype your reply above this line. So if they wanted to add something to that, they can reply to it and they just type in below. Now what I do, I would come to it. It's this one and simply reply. How can I help? Whatever you're going to put, right? I just reply to it. That's all it is. Now, note that my email address is paul at paulnicholson.com, right? The email that it was sent to was support at paulnicholson.com so here support at paulnicholson.com so you don't have to have somebody managing the the email account that it is being sent to is what I'll, i'm going to explain it better in a minute right so now the reply has gone so the customer has got a reply oh i'd have to refresh Request received, come on. There is a pain to do these things live, aren't there? Full request. I think it got promotions, did it? The customer will get the reply. I'm not sure why they haven't at the minute. But when I go, so while that's going, if I go back to my ticketing system, and I'm going to see here, uh, two minutes ago, I need some help with Zendesk. And I have replied, how can I help, right? I could always, I can also reply in this ticketing system. Hey, Paul, here's some info. Uh, put a link, whatever I want to do, right? And then I've got a choice here of submit. Pending, submit, open, or submit, resolved. 
So help desk staff is waiting for the requester to reply. Uh, help desk is working on the ticket. So if you've got stuff you need to do and then come back, you leave it open. If you're waiting for the customer to reply, you leave it pending. Or if you are um, wanting to mark it as solved, then you uh, you basically close it out, right? Sorry, someone's making a load of noise in the next room and they know I'm recording, but <laughs> this is going well today. So submit as open, because uh, sub I've got stuff to do, but then I can claim it to submit as pending. The customer will get the reply, even though, here we go, here's the reply. So two does reply, how can I help? Uh, I need some help, and then there'll be another run here. All, all customer has to do is uh, reply to this email. Thanks, that is great. Um, I'll look into it and get back to you. Well, there you go, it's even trying to type it in for me. Send, I don't use Gmail anymore. So that is the customer journey, right? I'm gonna get the email to my uh, mailbox any second. It's going to upload to this. Here we go. So there we go. Thanks. That is great. I'll look into it and get back to you. That's probably a way to reply to that and close that ticket off. But I don't actually know how to do it. So uh, here we go. Here's a reply. Thanks. That is great. If I want to, I can do an internal note. Zendesk interested. Maybe going to buy. Right. So when it comes up later, you can see the notes. You can see the history and things like that and submit as solved. So that is the basic uh, start to finish of a, a, a ticket being put into your system. Right, so let's go through the second interaction where somebody may just come up and send your email. So they know your email, so you're everywhere on your site saying, if you've got any problems, send your email to support at paulnicholson.com or whatever yours is. Hello, I went with Zendesk. Hi Paul, uh, I signed up with Zendesk, where is the training? I'll leave it like that because people generally don't say please and thank you when they're firing emails to me. Um, send. So now I am doing it direct. They have got the contact information and I'm going to get a ticket signed up. I'm going to be drinking my coffee while it comes through. Come on. There's the request received. Look, so the email has come back. Your request has been received. Uh, and they can reply to it above the fold. Um, I mean, the free training. Send. And that will shoot off on top of that ticket. Here's the email I've got. So here's the first one. The second one will bump on the top of that in a second. But I can click this ticket number here to jump to the ticket. And that will take me to all the information. So there's the two comments that have been sent. I can say, uh, just give me a minute to find the link if I need that sort of thing, or the newsletter, or whatever it is. Submit is pending. Up here, I can assign that to somebody else. I can tell support to do that. So if you've got more people in your area, you can, um, you can, uh, sorry, you've got more people in your team, you can assign it to somebody else. If you've got other users that you want to assign to this ticket who might work with that person, you can do it. You can tag. Uh, I'm not sure how you do tags and desk. I'm not sure if you can do it that way. Oh yeah, you just test tab, type, question, incident or problem. You can give it all different areas. Priority, low, medium, high or urgent. And submit as pending. So when you go through, you can see here, look. Here's the information come through. Pending status versus the open ones. Uh, urgent and it's a question 
finally you can go uh, hello is free training Zendesk, right? It's probably not set up to be that. Oh no, Zendesk training. Zendesk used to be uh, when I had a, a well, I was a partner, but not a proper partner uh, because they don't do affiliate partners. They only do things to sell you stuff, and then you have to pay them first. Uh, so Zendesk training, and I'm going to submit as solved, even though they can reply to it still because I've solved it. So if I go back here, when the email comes through. Uh, just give me a minute. Waiting for that other email. They can still reply to a closed ticket. It isn't like it's all shut down. They'll reopen it. And there's all sorts of different things you can run to say after so many days of not hearing from them, send them a reply, send them some sort of bump. Do you still need help? Can we close this ticket? All sorts of things like that. All sorts of different th ways of uh, giving your customers a better experience. Here's the link. Oh, it came through. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't do the link properly first time, did I? Uh, and it's closed, but they can still say, "Great, thanks." Right, and it will. Have I just cancelled this the message? Hopefully not. Do, do. That's the second email come through. So it is a bit confusing when I do these. Um, oh, there you go. Great, thanks. And it's closed. Okay. So that's the whole way a ticket process works. Yes, there's a 100,000 different other things you can add. And we will cover that in a training program. And you can say to me, Paul, how do I do this? And I'll create a free video on exactly how to do that, right? But I do use Zendesk every day. But because I'm a one-man army... Uh, I don't use all the features to, to share with a team or share their reports. I don't need to, right? So I'm very basically replying to emails. Right, let me just quickly talk to you about that email that just went there, the support at Paul Nicholson. This is the email field that what you set up, right? So what you basically do is, is if you've got an IT department or you've got a support email set up already, you forward it to the Zendesk email. The settings are all here, but you basically forward this email to this email and it will automatically create tickets sent to this email, right? So I don't have, uh, I have G Suite, but I set up a, a forwarding. If anybody emails support at paulnicholson.com, it forwards the email to this email, which then Zendesk pick up and create a ticket. Then you can reply and it will reply via Zendesk as this email. So it's a little bit funky because you've all got a thousand different types of email system. But again, if you've got a, um, uh, an IT department, all they need to do is create an email address that forwards to this one. Right. Then you have to say uh, you may have to check some settings so that you can send it back via this email. Right. So if you need it, if you need it and the information on how to do that isn't great on Zendesk, I will create a video on how to do that. If you need one on G Suite. Uh, and how to set up that because it is a bit funkier i'll create a video but you're effectively forwarding whichever emails you want to go to your ticket system direct to uh, your support at whatever this default domain or whatever this uh, initial email is with a zendesk.com so you forward it to that and then you reply but it replies as you so it can be a bit funky if you need an answers on it you can uh, leave a comment on this video or you can um, send me a message, right? Right, let's have a quick fly through the guide and how the guide works uh, or your knowledge base, right? Whatever you want to call it. So I go up here to uh, support. No, I don't. I go to guide. Um, so my, my guide's set up into three different sections. There's effectively a, um, a search box, articles. All these are articles, even though my blog, I had a, I had a, a spell of blogging through this. Uh, I'm not probably, probably a good thing. It's basically your knowledge base. So mine is up here, look, on the light version, paul.zendesk.com. On the more expensive versions, you can make that support.yourdomain.com. But probably Zendesk itself is um, it's probably not a bad thing to leave as because it does seem to pick up well on search engines. I get a lot of visitors through this on my search. And there's a community aspect of it, which uh, I'm not sure... 
Is it because I'm logged in? Uh, pull dot Zendesk. Sometimes logged in is different to logged out. Recently, I don't know if sure I did with my community. Um, but you'll see that people can jump in, read articles, rate the articles, and leave a comment, right? They can sign in and leave a comment and things like that. So it's really easy to set up. And the second part of the guide is that there is a submit, uh, a request button, right? So that is basically, if you want someone to come to your website via and leave a, a message, then you would send them to that link, right? So if you see on my website, do I have a contact button? Yes, contact me, right? So it actually goes to pnuk.co forward slash contact, but it will forward to the web form. Because I'm logged in, it doesn't show you. If I just, in fact, if I go back here, oh man, right? pnuk.co forward slash contact, but then I forward that to that request button. So it will jump to here, okay? So in your guide, if you go to guide admin, I'm gonna walk you through the back of the guide. You've got articles um, where you're gonna set them. So you're gonna go in and write an article. You're gonna, that's not probably a good example because it is my blog, right? Um, let's go some by let's go where back, right? Um, buy or set up your domain so I can add, add a title, like any kind of blog post, uh, embed a video if, that's, if it's video training, put in my information, my, uh, message by who can manage this article, is it the managers or the agents and the managers, that's setting permissions, who is it visible to, only people who are signed in, so you might want to have a private uh, knowledge base that says you need to sign in to see this stuff, it might just be for your staff, so you can have a knowledge base for your own, your own staff to view, so if you've got some sort of internal training you want to do, you can make it that only agents and managers can see that. Open for comments, uh, promote it would make it a featured article. Who's the author? If you've got more than one, you could tag any labels, any attachments, and then you would save it, right? So it's really easy to manage and do the hierarchy on the articles um, and see everything you've got. Obviously, if you haven't published anything, any drafts, you can go through and edit and change anything you've closed. You can take articles down. Any spam comments you would see. Uh, arrange the articles. So if you want to import articles, you can. But if you wanted, so let's show that the... Um, so it's frequently asked questions and announcements. If I wanted to move that up, it would change. It automatically changes. So if I go back here now, announcements should jump across. Oh, there we go. So you can arrange the articles in whichever order you want. So the, the categories you can arrange and then in each uh, category you have tagged an article. Theme, you can tinker with the themes. I think this is Copenhagen or something. Yeah, Copenhagen, I think it's a very popular theme. You can add themes. There's probably a place to buy themes and stuff like that. You can tinker with it. Within the team, uh, you can... Uh, team? Within the theme, you can... It's a while since I've done this. Um, you can add your code. You can add your... Um, Do -do, copy. I can't remember how to do it off the top of my head. But you can go through and edit your uh, and put some code in there if you wanted to track how many people have visited, if you wanted to do a cookie consent or edit code. It says there, right? So you can go in and tinker with the code. So you go to the header maybe and add any code. Uh, yeah, I think that's a, that's the actual wedge. That's the oh, that's no, opt-in forms. I don't need that anymore. Actually. I don't use it. Clicky stats, I could add my clicky stats. I don't use that either. It's a good thing I've got rid of some cookies on that, that knowledge base. But you can tinker with it and do anything you want. Uh, so you can see the, the knowledge base is something you build. It's an article-driven place. It's somewhere people can talk. I'm not sure what's happened to my community. I wonder if um, they upgraded and then downgraded me. I'm not sure what happened to my community tab. So there's a bit of a forum area, but it seems to have gone missing. Um, do, 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 guide. 
content moderation. So there's obviously settings as well. Security, regard, powered. I'd leave that Zendesk logo on if you give me any commission. Yeah, I don't know what um what happened to my community. Activate community. Uh, gather set. I don't know. It adds community features to her help center. All right. Allow users to create an alias to keep their real name private. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. So let's turn that on. Yeah, the gather's like another level funky thing that you might want to look into, but I'm not sure how it works. Does that add some sort of community aspect to it? Yeah. There is some sort of forum thing there that comes up as well, which I'll do better versions of in my videos. It's a bit, a bit scatty now, isn't it? I didn't, um, they downgraded, they upgraded and downgraded me. Um, I went to an upgrade and paid 300 quid, but it didn't have the feature I wanted because their pricing page is rubbish. So then I asked them to put me back and they might not put me back to exactly where I was. Oh, it's the community tabs here now, look. Uh, so any, if you've got any community things you want to put, so this is more of a forum feature request. You can have little categories, uh, general discussion. So what should be your online issue? So I can ask questions and people can comment. Uh, people can just write a new post. Title, general discussion. So I can set these categories, video request, uh, Zendesk, help guide, better intro. Uh, that intro to guide was rubbish. Can you do a better one? Please. Submit. So they can add these different, they, they now can add their own, they, your customers or your help staff can add a information. There's the community now showing up. So you see here, join the community, recent activity in the community. Or well, I think that's the whole thing really, is all training. Join the conversation. Oh, I put it in video request, didn't I? Video request, send desk help guide. Uh, better intro. So people can come in. They'd have to sign in and, and agree, share, do whatever they want. So that was a little bit scatty again, but I think you get the point. that You can have your knowledge base articles. You put them in categories. You can have a forum that has categories to help people ask questions. You can convert tickets to categories or knowledge baits articles and things like that as well so it's really cool right right final thing i want to show you chat uh, i want to show you um visitors online so it's gonna as you go online you can obviously you can go offline go invisible so that you can view people on your site without it showing up so it says help you are not live to the customer they will just create tickets to you um when you go live, you can, um, it will say chat there, right? So I'm gonna show that in a second, but I see that this person's live. Let me just reload that to make sure it's still seeing it in invisible. And I believe you're viewing start a chat. So if you know who that person is, and if in, it remembers their IP address or anything like that, it will come up with information. If you've talked to them before, it will come up with information. So if I, I'll do it the other way around to show you exactly what will happen. So if I go online, this here will say chat. Does it automatically? When I go chat, I'm gonna go pull uh, Nico, add my email. You wanna ask people for your email. For simple fact, um, if you drop the chat, you need to be able to get back in touch with them. Hello, Paul, right? Start the chat, hopefully no. Uh oh, yeah, really annoying noises. I think you probably can change them. So, uh oh, here's your information. Here's your little request thing. If you add notifications, it would be telling you them. So, I'm going to put up here Blue Jeans Paul. Any past chats? It's been on the site two minutes. How did he get here? Direct traffic. Uh, any tickets? No current tickets. I'm in Swindon. I don't know why my computer thinks I'm always in Swindon. Uh, I'm in Doncaster. You can tell by the accent. Uh, right, let's just try to, here's the chat, let's try and do it live. Uh, hey, uh, I'll call him Dave. How is it going? So you can see Paul Nicholson is typing here. 
how is it going? Enter. Dave gets his pop up. Chat has started. And there's a ticket created. Uh, let me just close this this way. Let's see if we can do it this way. Oh, man. Uh, hi, Paul. Now, I'm always interested. I haven't. Yeah, this, I, I prefer this. Right. You can't see what they're typing. A lot of chat windows will show you what they're typing. And I think if you haven't told the customer that, it's very dodgy. So, uh, I hate your videos, right? Or whatever they're going to say. But then they go, um, uh, I'm struggling with your Zendesk video, right? But there's a lot of chat boxes that would have shown the person what they were typing in. It might be a setting I've turned off, I'm not sure. But I would recommend if you're doing that, if you can see that, I'm not sure if you can or not, in here or on the other chat, say, uh, just to let you know, I can see what you are typing. Uh, so I can answer quicker, right? So if you are using a chat, and I'm not sure about Zendesk doing that or not, tell the customer you can see what they're typing i just think it's a i think it's a bit of a con if people are you know if i go uh, how much do you want to pay and they type in uh, ten thousand now on zendesk it doesn't seem to be doing it <clears throat> but i might have turned it off i'm not sure sorry this is just a rant for anybody else who and then they go like this two thousand and you go, oh, ha, ha, they want to, right? I don't agree with it. I don't think it's very fun. But anyway, you can have your chat. You're going to do whatever you're going to talk about. You can see their profile within your Zendesk, which will then show you uh, tickets that they've got open. Here's the chat. I don't know why it hasn't picked up any tickets on that. Oh, because I put the wrong email address in again. <laughs> oh, my God. If I'd done if I'd done it, what I'll do is I'll come back and do another one. But they can just close the chat. They can add attachments. Um, they can email the transcript to themselves. They can change sounds, edit contact details. In fact, let's edit that contact detail. Edit that. I'm not sure if it'll pick it up in the chat. Uh, help desk delivery support. Uh, change the email to Gmail. And did you pick that up? Not very good. This is really not a very good example, is it? Again, is it bit, to say that I use Zendesk every day, well, this time when you clicked on it, it showed all the open tickets to that person or all the ticket history so that when you're running through things, you can see what you need to know. And they can close the ticket. They can end the chat, uh, leave a rating. Perfect. Send. Here we go, information, Paul has left. If you want to continue again, you can reactivate it just before you go. And there's settings that you can do, I think it's hashtag. Uh, if you've got any set up, like say they say, what's the price for your favorite product? You can do uh, a link, uh, hashtag go, hashtag price, and it'll, it'll send them the information they want in a, something you've already set up. So I think you can see live chat's easy to use, even though I don't use it very often, just because uh, obviously if I'm doing videos and someone live chats, it's harder to do. Transcripts will be sent. Um, so if I go back, chat started, chat ended. If I go here and I believe, again, it's, here we go, uh, chat with. So here's the chat. Info, Pat, join the chat, uh, left the chat. Here's the information on the, what that was said. So it's all in the tickets, all information. And both sides can see for future what was said, what was recorded, what the agent, the sales agent or the support agent 
promised or didn't promise and all the information is there and it'll go in your history and things like that so not a great introduction as this has been a struggle but hopefully you're getting the gist of of how chat works and i'm going to go offline now invisible which will make this button go from chat to help eventually invisible so when it says help not available when it says chat or whatever you want to put you can talk to them and that's the free version of chat so it doesn't cost anything that one so i hope i've given you some sort of idea in quite a flaky way i'm not too impressed with about how i organize that um but i hope i gave you some information and some ideas of what zendesk, zendesk can do i do use it every day even though it's uh, surprising but I don't do a lot of customer interaction if somebody sends me an email or fills my help box in I just reply to the email it doesn't matter to me uh, what support tier they're on or what uh, help level or if they're a partner I just reply to emails so I don't dive in and use it as well as I could um, and there's other things I'm gonna make I'm gonna make my uh, knowledge base a lot better now that I've got it back up and running uh, and use it for uh, more information but you'll see you'll see that you know the chat with Paul Nicholson is ticket number there's a ticket number here yeah, 19 1929 you know I don't have I haven't met um, examples I haven't um, put put a load of custom ones in to met that uh, inflated that I mean, I've answered 1900 support tickets and we'll continue to use Zendesk it's really easy to use um, and set up and just get flying with. Any questions, any uh, things I can help with, comment below. I will do a, I will do a simple and basic video for you uh, if I can do it, if I can get access to that setting. What I will do is also, I'm not sure if there is at the minute, pnuk.co forward slash Zendesk training. I will have left the link uh, in the description all the way through. Yeah, I will create a training course on that link. At the moment, there is no training because I'll split this video up into introduction training. I will add Zendesk official training and I will give you a place where you can ask your questions and I will um, add custom videos into that training. So all my training is free, nothing to sign up. Nothing, you've got to sign up for the training, but all my training is free. I don't charge for any of it. Um, so dive in, ask your questions, get, don't get stuck, uh, and I'll help out best you can. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. A subscribe to my channel would be amazing, and I will see you all again soon. Cheers.